What's going on guys, Andrew Pillicocki here back again with another video and today is going to be a quick one. You guys can probably see the title, the Toronto Maple Leafs have signed defenseman uh, Miko Lettinen. Now here's the thing, hopefully I'm saying that right, Lettinen, Lettinen, uh, Miko Lettinen, Lettinen, however you want to say it. He was um, widely regarded as the best um, European free agent this year. Uh, which is really, really good. Uh, he He's a defenseman. He's a left-shot defenseman. And I know I, I'm going to have to say this right off the top. People are probably seeing this and going, why do the Leafs need another left-handed shot defenseman? Well, the Leafs are going to be in a bit of a uh, salary cap pinch this, uh, <laughs> this offseason, as you guys know. But... Uh, Guys, I think this might be the end for Travis Dermott. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's it's official. Uh, I'm not saying it's 100% what's going to happen. But Travis Dermott is a restricted free agent this year. And I would imagine he's probably going to get more than what the Leafs signed Letton for. I'm guessing that he's probably getting, uh, you know, probably 975, 925. I don't think it can be anything more than a million, whereas Dermot would be pushing towards $2 million. The Leafs need to save every penny possible. And I'm also seeing a lot of people say, well, you know, what about Sandine? I think the Leafs, what they're going to do is, is they're going to try to move him over to the right side, or they might try this Lettinen guy on the right side, or who knows, maybe they move Morgan Riley over. But so far now, the Leafs' blue line next year are locks, are number one, um, Morgan Riley, Jake Muzzin, Lettinen, um, Rasmus Sandin. Okay, so that's four, right? Five, Justin Hall. Again, I've got a bit of a theory on him. I'm not really sure. Maybe the Leafs look to upgrade him. And then, you know, you have Travis Dirt. Like, there's there's a bunch of different op opportunities for this Leafs blue line. But f for now, Miko Lettinen is a very good signing. He's an offensive uh, type of guy, but uh, a lot of people apparently are saying that his defense is actually is pretty good. They're, they're saying that it's not like this guy can't play defense. He's he's actually pretty good at playing a two-way game, but it's not really uh, being talked about. Um, there Again, he's not going to just wow you with his defensive style. He's a puck-moving guy, and that's why I believe there could be a reason for the Leafs to trade Dermott um, or you know move him around. I'm not sure. Maybe they trade Justin Hall in a package to upgrade that right-handed shot defenseman. I don't know. There's a ton of options, and maybe I'll make a video with DTSB, Downtown Stephen Brown, uh, and we'll talk about what their options are. But basically, they signed him to a one-year entry-level contract for next season. Obviously, it's, it, there's no effect on whatever happens this year. Uh, he's 26 years old. He appeared in 60 games uh, with Joker of the KHL during the 1920 season. He had 49 points. 17 goals and 32 assists, which led all KHL defensemen. Uh, he was sixth in the entire league in scoring. Um, he was named the KHL defenseman of the month three consecutive months from November to January. He had a goal and three assists in the KHL playoffs before it was canceled, of course. Um, he also uh, has been a member of championship teams. Uh, he's, he's represented Finland on the uh, world championship stage. He's been on the all-star teams. He also skated for Finland at the Olympic Games in 2018 and the 2014 World Junior Championships where he captured gold. Now, this is the thing. Everybody was saying, oh, the Kings are in on him, the Habs are in on him, the Devils are in on him, and that he was going to get top four or probably top two minutes on some of these teams. Well, guys, the Leafs swooped in and said, we, we're going to make this blue line stronger by bringing in another guy that can that can come in and play to the style that this team plays. And I don't want people sitting here and freaking out and saying, well, this is another guy that the Leafs can't use. That blue line is going to be upgraded even more. It, they don't have a choice. The Leafs are going to do it. And it, and they're going to trade guys like Janssen, maybe Kerfoot as well. Um, they're going to have to upgrade by trading a guy like Dermott, maybe Hall to boost. You know, use the money that you're paying Hall and try to put him in a package to just upgrade that right-handed shot. So there's options, like there, there is options, and the Leafs are going to do something. They're, this isn't it. I'm telling you guys right now, this isn't it. Um, we're obviously very early into this off season, and, you know, whatever's going on right now, um, this is a great signing. The, the Leafs were not reported to be in on this guy, and then all of a sudden the best European free agent is a Maple Leaf. You guys got to give Kyle Dubas some credit here. This is amazing. This is a great pickup for the Leafs. Regardless, if he doesn't have to be, you know, a superstar, he just has to come in and play a, a solid game, 
And uh, I think that this is just, this is a great signing for the Maple Leafs. I was very, very excited. I didn't say a ton of stuff about him because I was kind of bummed out. The early reports were saying that the Leafs weren't interested. Um, and then, I mean, Dubas swooped in and signed him. So uh, I don't know. I don't think that there's anything on Cap Friendly right now um, talking about how much he signed for. Um, I'm going to have to check. But I'm looking right now, and it doesn't see, seem like there's anything on here right now. Sorry, guys. I know it's a little bit... Uh, right now, that was probably dark. I'm on Twitter, and I have, like, the dark mode on. But uh, there's, there's nothing here that's saying how much he's signing for. Um, so we're just going to have to, we're just going to have to keep an eye on what, uh, what could be included. Now, here's the thing from Chris Johnson. He did say, uh, that Lettinen's entry level contract doesn't include any performance bonuses for next season, just like Barabanov, because the Leafs also signed in a Barabanov, who's a pretty good winger. Uh, it's another much needed cost controlled option for the Leafs. So the Leafs get an upgrade for not having to spend too much money. That's good. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video or stream. Peace.